this point, I'm going to discuss the integration between JIRA and Continuous Delivery Edition. Basically, with JIRA, the uh, CDE team built a plugin, and the plugin again has uh, three major functions: an endpoint which does the connectivity to CDE and JIRA. It allows it to import content from JIRA, and it also performs tasks, which in this case are three different tasks. The uh, URL. Basically, the information you need to have for the connection to JIRA is a URL, a username, and a password. And this user must have the rights to interact with the JIRA server at the level you need it to have. There are also a bunch of additional settings that are in the um, uh, configuration for the endpoint that have to do with the proxy, proxy port, proxy username, password, and various, you know, HTMS and timeout, if you need to use those. Uh, as I described earlier, you'll need to hit the button that says test connection, and if you get the red plug, then you know you've got a failed connection and you need to try to uh, figure out what you've done wrong. Now, the importing content here is a little bit different. It's first, it basically uses uh, queries uh, to go out and query Jira to get the information you want. So you'll give it basically a name that says uh, that whatever the source is that you're trying to get. Uh, the type, of course, is your JIRA JQL. The endpoint is your JIRA server. And then you define the, the query you want to run. And these can get fairly interesting. Uh, in fact, here's a good example of what's in the uh, help guide. You can do summaries, types, external IDs, display types, and status. Or you can combine a lot more stuff, too. In fact, I'll show you one, the one I did because I wanted to kind of limit the, the, the system we use for JIRA is used by a lot of people for different demos and playing, and if I just, when I first went in there and just did type equals um, uh, stat, you know, or each, each uh, type equals task, I got way too much stuff. So I was able to take and limit it down. And especially I did it most of it by doing a sign E and a may at my name. So I can just limit to what, limit what I want to see. So again, how you want to filter your information is key. So whenever you're trying to take and pull in the release, or, your, or the information, the content from JIRA of what you want to bring in, you have a lot of criteria that you can use to actually do that in a more precise way. With JIRA, you can actually perform three different tasks. One of them is you can add uh, comments to the issue. You can update a status, which is again changing the status from whatever it, it was, you know, what you want to the next status in progress or done. And we see they have three statuses. There's to do, in progress, and done. And then you can actually also create a JIRA issue. Now, when you're adding comments, all you need to do is have the issue key, which is the ID number or that the, each of them have. Like the one we're gonna be playing with is CI575, and I'll walk you through it a little bit. You can add your comments, and you can actually, do, again, use the after sign to do a pull up and gather information. So in this case, I can use it on the roll. If I'm doing an update JIRA issue status action or task, I need the key again. The translation is the actual new state that you want to actually change the, you know, the actual item to. You can actually enter a resolution if you want to and additional comments. Now, if you're building it, if you want to tell it to go out there and create a JIRA issue, you have pretty much all these fields to pick from, but the first three are mandatory. You've got to, of course, give it the CI key. Now, that is assigned to whatever, like, project that you're working on. So in my case, like I told you, I'm using CI, and then it puts whatever number by it. So again, you give it the CI key, and it will then assign the next sequential number to it when it creates the issue. Uh, the issue type, which could be a task, a story, a bug, whatever you've got con configured in there. And then the summary, which actually becomes the title of the new issue you've created. You can also assign to epics and priorities and due dates and effective versions and fixed versions. And actually, in my case, I did the assignee because I didn't want to again, I wanted to be able to pull it up and look at it quickly and easily. And so I put my name in there for the assignee and then reporter environment description and labels as well. And I'll show you all this here in two seconds and when we get into JIRA. Now, I've just logged into my JIRA system here, and as you can see, I pulled up the dashboard. And 
I kept mentioning this earlier, this is by the assigned to me group. So these are all the, you know, issues that are assigned to me. And of course, I've set this one up, CI575, to be, you know, my issue. And I, let's look a little closer at it just so we can kind of examine it and understand a few things. First off, I've created it as a story. It is set to to do, which you can see here's to do in progress or done. And of course, there's the assignees. And then I, I want to point out right now at this point, there are no comments in here whatsoever. So it doesn't, you know, it's not, there's nothing in here. So now let's go into uh, continuous delivery edition and let's take a look at, again, what we're dealing with here. Now on the JIRA, here's how you set up the endpoint. Again, it's fairly simple from my perspective, at least it was. I gave it a name, the JIRA server, who's authorized to use it, selected the JIRA endpoint, and then put in the URL, my username, and the password. You do have, again, oops, I need that right now, uh, all of these additional settings that are yours to you know, select from. And of course, then you do test connection and then save it. Now, releases, I have pre-built again another one here for us to look at. It follows again the same logic, development, test, and production. However, over here under the content, I've created four content, or three content items. Now, again, let me show you this, that I created this first one that I want to go out and pull stories that are to do. And of course, so you have to identify the JIRA JQL and the JIRA server. And as an example to what you can see here, I'm gonna pull that out real quick and just update this again. So in other words, I'm saying all I wanna do is see stories that have a status of to do. And by the way, the, the three statuses are to do, in progress, and done. If you're using or defining something to do to do or in progress, you'll need to put the quotes around it. Now, if I do it this way, you look and see, I get all of this, which is basically everybody's stories out there that are in the to-do state. So, again, this just shows a good way of filtering. I can come back here and I tell it that I only want to see the ones that are assigned to me. I update it, and all we see is 575. So, these queries can be built to bring in anything you want from your JIRA system. However, you have and of course, JIRA is very flexible, so you have the ability to define what you want, but then you gotta use the same definition here with the query to bring in what you want of course, along the way. Now, let's take a look at what CDE allows. And again, I'll kind of walk you through what I've built here. Again, I put a manual task in here just to stop it and give me time to talk. The very first thing I have is I wanted to add a comment. So let me show you here kind of how this works. Here I am, I've gone into here and I've created, a, you know, add, I, I selected the add comment or add issue comment, the JIRA server. I identified my issue key, which of course is the one that I needed. Uh, I added my comment lines in here. And just to show you, again, I can hit the button and it pulls up and I can even assign a role to it if I want to. So what I've got this set up to do right now is it's gonna add a comment that says that uh, the development work has started. It's then gonna run a release automation deployment and put the software in place. And then it's gonna come back in here and update the status of this particular job to our particular issue to in progress. And again, just to show you, I can pull this up and there's the to do in progress or done. And in this case, I wanna change it to in progress. And of course then I would stop here real quick when it gets to this point, just so we'll have a stop point. So I can kick this off, tell it to, the, you know, this is, the, you know, the build has come in, which would have been probably automated in a real environment. It's now added a comment here. The deployment has started, so the software's been put into place, and the issue now has been updated. So if I come over here and refresh the content story, you see that there is nothing in the to-do list any longer. But if I check in progress, my JIRA issue number now has moved into the in progress section. And of course, if we were looking inside of JIRA, you'd see that it was advancing as well. Now, as we get ready to go into the testing section, 
the first thing it's going to do is run a, again a job just like we did earlier and go into the uh, you know deploy the software into testing then I've got a manual task here which to, again this would have been automated probably to run a test and as that test is being run I want to update and tell Jira that this issue is now the development effort has finished and it's now in testing and then from there if once the test is successful it's going to add another comment that says that the test completed and it was successful so again we're updating JIRA all along the way as different things are occurring and then at this last point here this is the example I was given to look at some people who predominantly use JIRA want to have an issue open whenever th something needs to go into production so that's why I went ahead and created it at the end of the testing phase where it's ready to move into production saying okay you know I'm ready to, you know I, we're ready now to move this into production so this gives me an example to show you that I want to do a create JIRA issue uh, again just to, so you can kind of see this I can select the CI the issue type was uh, a story and then I'm putting in here that it is um, CI 575 and uh, that uh, or actually no what I had that set to a task I wanted to do is that that doesn't matter I can do it as a story or I can do it as a task or I can do it as anything I want it really doesn't matter as you noticed and then I can turn around and I'm telling it that the CI 575 is going into production and then to make it simpler for us to find in a few minutes, I added who the assignee was, which was me, so that I can get through the, you know, make it go that route. So again, it's all set up to run that way. So I'm going to release my manual task. And so the deployment's going to start automatically. It's going to deploy the software into the testing environment, which is successful. Then this task I made manual, but like I said, it would have been automated in real life. And now there's comments being updated to the JIRA saying that it's successfully done and now with the testing being successful it moves past that it's now updating the comments it's creating another JIRA issue that's going to go into there and now it's over in production here waiting to be pushed into production and of course I created a, a manual process here called configure firewall just to stop the stop the entire thing from running automatically so that we could talk about these now what I've set up over here is I've set up another action or task to go out there and say that the software is ready for production deployment. I've got a, another run deployment where it actually runs it out there. And then in the final step, I've set it up to where uh, it changes the status from in progress, which we have it over here in progress, to done. And at the comment, the software was deployed into production and that the story is done. So I'll kick that off and it will run the deployment. Or, or add the comment first, I'm sorry, and then run the deployment and then actually change the status to done. So then I come over here and I'll refresh this real quick and there's nothing in the in progress, but 575 is now moved to done. And if we go back to JIRA, and we actually I have to refresh the screen. Oh, now I have to log in. Okay. As you can see, it's gone to done. And what's more interesting is look at the comments. I can track the time. Of course, ours are in minutes, but it would have been different in a regular environment. The development effort has started. The development effort finished. It's now in testing. Testing was completed and successful. Software update ready for production deployment. And if I go over here and look at the dashboard, But there's a new task out there. Oh, no, no, there it is, right there. CI591. There's actually a new task out here, which is the one I created that tells me now that it's going into production.